Since we developed the first computer caliper in the early 90s, uh, harvester calibration has always been very important for us. We started already then looking into the standard that was at that time. Now we have a field system that uh, works with the new uh, DP2 caliper and it's fully integrated and it follows the new standard uh, as uh, we always done. It's very important of course to be able to communicate with, with all the different brands of harvesters. It doesn't matter really what onboard computer you have in the machine or what machine brand it is, as long as uh, they are following the standard uh, as we do, it will be uh, a system that you can use in any, uh, any machine and calibrate any, any system available on the market. The Scalman field applications that is used uh, in the caliper is uh, uh, translated into more than 15 different languages. My name is Maria Nordström and I work for Skogforsk, which is the Swedish Forest Research Institute. Uh, we're partly financed, financed by the Swedish state and then also by the forest sector and thereby also by the, the Swedish forest owners. The situation for STEM for 2010 right now is that all the machine manufacturers, they have adapted their system for the new standard. Right now the companies are beginning to adapt their systems to the new standard as well and, and starting to um, uh, make use of the new features to control uh, the harvester in a more flexible way. If we talk about harvester measurements, so the basis for, for having good um, harvester measurements is to have a system for control and feedback to the harvester teams on how they're doing and, and uh, to be able to identify if, if your measurements are not as good anymore as they used to be. Um, for that we have a system in Sweden so the control routine is based on a random selection of stems. So you get on average one stem per shift. And then the operator needs to, to go out and then control measure uh, the stem, all the logs of the stem manually. So measure both the length and then the top diameter and then every, uh, the diameter on every meter for the log. And the results from this uh, control measurement is stored in a standardized file format and then reported. And then when the system for the harvester control measurements, you have an independent auditor that looks at these results that you, that you report and then give feedback to the teams every second week. The thing is that uh, when the uh, operator of a harvester, he makes a control scaling out in the forest and he sends in the data in this case it's HQC files and we can audit and look at these uh, results uh, from a database. So that's what we do every second week. We check out on all the results that he has sent in. But then also we go out at least twice a year and visit uh, the operator himself to make sure that he works in a proper way. And I'd say that's very much about not so much controlling but uh, coaching of the operators that they carry out their work in a proper way using the equipment in, a, in the right way. So it's a win-win it's a situation and we're actually welcome when we come out to the operators to help them out. And they are curious, they want to be good. And also if you have a good routine of controlling your measurements that usually follows that you have a good control of your machine, that you have regular services and all of that which makes the, the whole machine works even better. The main idea of having all these measurements is because you, you want the, the harvester to produce the products that you would like, right? But often the, the, this discussion is around the volumes for payment, which is kind of not really the ground. In all transactions of the timber, when you, you're making business with that, uh, it's important that you have the right length and diameters of timber lengths. And uh, if the sawmill will obtain the correct diameters and lengths of the timber, their payment uh, ability will be greater. Over the last years, the sawmills have been more and more specialized. So they're demanding, they're putting higher and higher demands on the product that comes out of the forest. So the forest machines need to be very precise to be able to, to um, produce the products that are uh, demanded. Sweden and Finland, we are in the lead of this, but we see growing interest from other countries like Canada, France and Germany, Austria, so on. So they're, they're coming in and getting more and more interests in, in these questions as well. Mm -hmm.